Hi everyone, it's Carol, Rosebud Stitcher, ep back for episode 13 of my Floss Tube channel. I want to welcome all of you. I've got some new subscribers, so welcome to you. And uh, this is a channel about cross stitch mostly, a little bit about life and um, that sort of thing. And today it is Sunday, March 14th, and I want to welcome you all again, and I hope you enjoy our visit today. So, what have we been up to the last two weeks? Well, I don't know about in your area, but we've had some really awesome pre-spring weather. Had some nice sunny days. I think I put the winter coat away, but unfortunately I think we're going to have to take it back out because that four-letter word of snow is in the air. So, But otherwise, it's been a beautiful two weeks. Um, I actually was able to go and get my first COVID vaccine and I'm happy about that, hoping that we can get life back to normal as we knew it or somewhat normal. Um, my husband's going on Tuesday to get his first, so we will be um, on our way. And thankfully here in Indiana, it's going very well, so we're pleased with how it's gone. So I thought I'd give a little bit of a statistical thing um, for the month of February, because we Last met, February wasn't over yet, but um, during the month of February, I actually was able to stitch every day again. So I've stitched every day this year so far, even into March. I had 17,005 stitches for the month of February, and I've got 35,112 as of the end of February. So I'm really pleased in my progress and all the stitch I, stitches I've been able to get in. I thought I would um, kind of share with you some of the other floss tubers I watch, and probably most of you watch them also, and they're in no particular order, but um, I enjoy watching uh, Creatively Yours, uh, Cynthia Brew at Stitching in the Light, Celeste Creates, Daylene at So Grateful, she's such a sweet lady. Of course, Brenda and the Serial Starter. Who could resist them and all their enabling? <laughs> um, salt ba Box Stitcher. Um, Kim at the Contented Stitcher. I mean, she just lifts me up every time I watch her. I'm just, just, um, is so uplifting and everything. Um, another one of my favorites is a couple of my Stitchy Pals, the Two Over Two Stitchers. Um, we, pre-pandemic, we always met at least once a month. Um, typically at Panera Bread and spent the evening stitching and laughing and sharing and oh I can't wait to get back to those days. We've saw we've seen each other a couple times um, since the pandemic um, started but we re have really tried to be careful during all of this so I, I can't wait to get back to being able to meet more often. And the other day I watched, yesterday it was, I watched another floss tuber um, I got the suggestion um, from the Contented Stitcher, so maybe some of you also have checked her out. Um, it's Merritt Crawford, um, and she is just delightful um, with her stitching. She's been stitching a long time, and she's got some quilting. So I uh, encourage you to check her out also. So I just wanted to share this kind of things I've been uh, watching. I typically watch floss tube uh, most days you know there's some evening ship programs I watch but right now they're kind of in hiatus and I think I shared before I'm kind of a criminal mind it was always a criminal mind junkie so sometimes I will watch that but for the most part I watch floss tubes so um, and it's enjoyable and I enjoy seeing everybody and being enabled by everyone so today I don't did not do any FFOing the past two weeks. Like I said, um, I got the, my um, shot, and I mean, it wasn't bad, but there, I didn't feel quite well a couple days. Um, just like one, uh, the next day I didn't feel that well, so I was like, eh, I'm not gonna stitch, and, or so get the sewing machine out. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Just had some other things going on. So I didn't get any FFOing done, but I got some finishings done. I'm going to share those with you, um, share my plans. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I got some a little bit of haul. 
But what I thought I would share is two previously FFO things. And these are were such very, very, very long ago. This first one, I do not know, remember who the designer is. It was a, an Amish lady quilting and her two little girls. And like I said, this was done many, many years ago. So, and um, I've just always, um, the Amish lifestyle, I mean, I don't all know a lot about their their faith, but, <clears throat> but that their lifestyle, their simple lifestyle, their family, and yes, they can cook, <laughs> and just the simplicity of it. And so I've always been drawn to kind of the Amish, and my husband will tell you if, he asked me where I want to go. I'll tell you Shipshawana, which is an Amish community. I love to go over there and shop and um, just enjoy the little restaurants and that sort of thing. So this is a, one of my favorites, and it hangs here in my craft room. And another one. This was from many years ago also. This is A Heart's Content. Some of you may be familiar with that. I do know it is still on her um website the heart's content and i did this over one so many many years ago and like i said it is one of my favorites you know one of the things i'm most proud of you know with my first over one uh stitching and i just you know i just love it it's it's one of my favorites so so those are two um, previous finishes that I had. So what did I get finished this past couple weeks? Well, like I shared uh, several weeks ago, I decided that I would um, crochet afghans for my six grandchildren. And I had the first one done and I finished up the second one. And I'm not, it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> but as you can imagine, this is for probably can imagine this is for my oldest granddaughter and uh I remember when I started I told my daughter I said oh it's really really purple and she said that's fine that's one of her favorites so so in this um pattern it's called the modern granny and instead of a square it's kind of a rectangular shape and it's um it crochets up crochets up pretty quickly it's only the two rows and they're the same so you know I sit every morning after my devotion time and as I'm finishing my coffee I, I work on those um, I'm doing them with one of the Karen cakes um, so I just do a color it has several colors in each um, ball of yarn and I just do a color every morning and it takes me about six weeks or so to get it done so I'll be done in plenty of time so I started the third one yesterday and like I told my grand, my daughter and my daughter-in-law, two down, four to go. So, excuse me one minute, I forgot to finish. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, when we last met, I was getting ready to work on Welcome Summer by The Drawn Thread, and I did get it completed. So, as I stated before, I am doing, I bought the kits directly from the drawn thread. So it gives you the linen and the NPIs and the dinky dies. I think it had two NPIs and 10 dinky dies. This one actually had some, some beads in it for the watermelon seeds, which I thought was cute. Got a sweet bee scap here for all you bee lovers out there. So there are some different stitches in in these. Um, let's see, we've got some rice stitches over in the blackberries, and some like double cro crosses in the geraniums, some satin stitches, and the bees in the bee scap. So. So I've got one more to do, the welcome fall, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I finished that up on Thursday. So I had a couple more days in um, left for that week's rotation because I usually usually change on 
Sunday. And so like we, when we last met, I had been working on these heart and hand square dance and I had completed and was starting. I had completed totally through August and I had shared, well, if I have a couple days in a rotation, I'm just going to pick this back up and try and get one or two done. Well, Friday afternoon when I pulled that, that project bag out, I said, you know what? I'm just stitching through and finishing all these. So I did complete the, complete them all. Get them here. So I finished September. All you chicken fans out there. <laughs> I finished October. This is owls. And I loved these two little ones. The two of them sitting on top of each other. And I got November done, which is pineapples. And then December, which was a bunch of Christmas ornaments. So like I said, this um, series was Heart and Hand um, Square Dance series. And I used um, the called for linen, which was 32 count vintage country mocha. And I used the called for fancy flosses. So... Um, mostly Karen, um, the Karen collection, um, yeah, and um, we Sky Works, so, and they, all the um, little pamphlets came with the buttons, so each of them had three little buttons on them, and I have an idea for finishing on them, I'm just going to make them into little flats, and I have, I guess you would call it like a recipe holder, but it sits up high, and I think I'll be, um, displaying them that way each month so that was a, another finish so so that took me till like mo yeah Monday evening we had um, our youngest granddaughter turn three so we had a birthday party over that weekend and so I was out of the house a little bit and um, just some other things going on so I finished that up Monday evening and so then what would have been my Sunday new start I started on Tuesday and that new start said I have six grandchildren and I'm making them the shepherd's bush stocking. The girls, I both have, both have the, both of the girls are finished and I'm using the Elizabeth. And for the boys, I'm using the Robert's stocking. So I have two girls done. I have three boys done. So I started on my youngest grandson's stocking on Tuesday, and I am using um, the 18 count natural linen and the pearl cottons on these. So I am doing them as called for. And as of last night, this is where I had gotten to. So I've got all of, I guess it's the Santa is completed so all I have to do now uh, what I'll have to do is the toe part which is like some reindeers and squares of colors these moon and stars that are up here that in the name and then I'll, I will get them all finished um, and then finally have them finished and hanging up um, it's kind of been a long process. I have, I guess it's, I have six grandchildren. The oldest is eight, or will be eight in May, and the youngest will be two in June. So they kind of came, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> so I was working on things, and this is a, just a project that kind of didn't always get worked on. So I'm hoping this Christmas they're all hanging up here when they come over. So th that is going away not going away but it's been put away that will become my focus piece after I finish my other focus piece which I'll go over here with plans so today normally on the second Sunday I would have pulled out my focus piece but I'm going to flip that to next week and I'll explain that then when I show that so today I'm going to be starting pulling out my Rose Quaker sampler I'm doing this all in the called for DMCs and 
I've had this kitted up so long. They're still kind of in the D they're still in the floss away bags, but I didn't want to change it. So they're all kind of pinks and browns. Um, one of the things I'm changing is the K, the R, and J. J. They're right in a row, which just ha so happens to be my initials. So I'm going to darken those up a little bit so that they kind of pop from the other um, out parts of the alphabet. In this project, I did I I can't tell you what I like. I said I kitted this up many many years ago, and it just laid in my stash. Um, but when I started it, I decided, and it looks like I had planned on doing it over one. And so I am doing it over one. So I have page one totally completed. So I'll get started on page two this afternoon after we finish up here. So, and if you haven't guessed it, yes, my middle name is Rose. Um, I love roses. So, <laughs> so my focus piece um, this that I started out with was. Um, at the beginning of the year was uh, the farms of Hawk Run Hollow. Pull that out. I'm doing it in this formation and I am doing it on um, 40 count parchment and this is the old weeks. So as you can see Quite a bit on that. Sorry, I didn't realize it was as wrinkly as it was. Um, I am doing this in memory of my dad. He grew up on a farm. He passed away in um, 2018. And um, sitting at his bedside, he uh, talked about growing up on the farm. And one, one day he actually said how thankful he was. It was a beautiful farm. Um, he literally, from his bedroom window as a kid, could see the dome of Notre Dame. So it kind of puts it in perspective. But um, I have been uh, personalizing this along the way. Like I said, usually I would pull this out this week, the second week. But um, on the 27th, it would have been his 80th birthday. So I thought, well, I'm going to work on this next week just so that I'm I'm working it on it in his birthday. And I, I know he knows that I think of him so very, very often. But... So I'm down here in this square, which is the little farmer, and I'll have something to personalize that with. My goal is to have this done by June, no later than July, the anniversary of his passing, and I think I will make it for sure. So that will come out next week, and um, we'll work away on that. And I am using the NPI silks. Um, so. They are enjoyable to work with. So then after that, um, that'll be the week we'll be meeting again. If I stay on schedule, which I plan to, I will be pulling out my last uh, welcome by Drawn Thread, Welcome Autumn. So it's a really nice fall. We've got some ravens, a pumpkin. It looks like some, uh, I don't know if they're going to call that bittersweet or... Some sort of flowery basket, mums maybe, and a little squirrel. So, I said I bought all of these um, kitted up off of uh, the Drawn Thread website, and it's very reasonable. And she gives you uh, plenty of uh, the NPIs. This one's um, dinky dyes only, maybe. Yeah, it looks like maybe just dinky dyes. So she gives you plenty of fibers to complete it. So and. As you can see from the Welcome Summer, very generous cut of fabric. So that's what I'll be starting two weeks from now, and that'll be about when we meet again. So those are my plans for the next two weeks. So I thought I would share a little bit. I did get this beautiful card from Daylene, a little Easter card, and I'm sure she sewed this beautiful quilt. It's just lovely. So I wanted to share that and thank her. For sending that for Easter. And another thing I wanted to share with you, I don't know how many of you have um, looked at this magazine, um, but 
I picked it up this time. I haven't always there for a while. I did not, it just wasn't piquing my interest, but this issue was really great. And what, what uh, draw, drew my attention to it on the newsstand was um, it had a reproduction sampler right there. And there's a nice, there's two nice articles about school, there's one about schoolhouse samplers. And oh, maybe it's just one about school. And then um, this other one, schoolhouse samplers like morning dew on a rose. And you actually get the pattern for this sweet little sampler with rosebuds along the edge and the maple leaves. So I encourage you, this is a, let's see, the spring 2020 issue. It does, it's not just crossword, cross, crossword. My husband loves crossword puzzles. <laughs> it's not just cross stitch. Um, this issue has um, some banded and just embroidery work. Um, and they're very interesting articles. It's more of telling you about the history of the things um, and that, you know, in the genre of it, where it's come from worldwide. So you get a little bit of a history lesson. And I thought this was a really interesting art, art, article. It's called The Anatomy of a Collection. And the author wrote it as she was cleaning out her mother's home in her sewing room. And it's really interesting. Uh, I think it's a three-part series, so I may have to pick them up just to finish it. And another article which really um, drew my attention, I was surprised I enjoyed it so much, was an article about George Washington Carver. You know, he, he was um, instrumental in some Tuskegee, Tuskegee in Institute, I believe it was, in our, the agricultural movement, but he was a prof prolific crocheter and painter. He had actually wanted to have get a degree in fine arts and it actually shows some of his crochet pieces in here and it they did give you some uh, instructions for some of the swatches so it's really really interesting article and then another article about the soldiers and I had heard about these um, um, when they were convalescing in in the hospitals making um, quilts so I thought these are very some very interesting articles. So like, if you're interested in samplers or just the history of needleworks, it might be something you may want to look at. So haul. <laughs> yeah, Carol needs, Carol's got enough uh, patterns to last a while. But I keep picking up more. I tell myself I really need to start concentrating on kidding some of these up because I tend to just buy the patterns. So that might be my focus for a little bit. <laughs> but one of the ones I, I could not pass up, and a lot of people have been showing it, is the Scarlet House, the Little Deeds. I think it's just a sweet little sampler. And let's see here. Another thing I picked up. So last time I shared some of the purchases I had gotten from the By the Bay Needle Art. And when I got my package, she sent a coupon, um, you know, as a thank you. And there was another thing in her collection, and she didn't have too many of them. And I thought, well, it's kind of a perfect time. I had seen this when she had done this as a stitch along and didn't partake. I was just too busy, was still working at the time, and just did not do it. But it's the By the Bay Seasons. And it's, it was an eight part series. So each season you got two little things and you could do it into this wreath thing, wreath motif. So I got all eight seasons. And then as a thank you for doing this, she gave you these, if you wanted to switch it up, she gave you some wording and you could just take like what she called the postcard, one of the pieces from here and just do it. But I'm, my plan is to do it all together. Um, she has an alternative for seasons in here, so I've just emailed her the other day to see if I could get that alternative, alternative uh, biblical verse. And I just, I think it's a beautiful um, 
piece depicting all four seasons in one one thing. Whenever I see something like this, I don't know why, but I think of my grandmother. And I'm, I'm not really sure why, because I think she just liked autumn. I mean, her home was always in auto, uh, autumnal colors, but I just think of her often. So that was a nice purchase. Another thing I got was from Stitching with the Housewives. So I saw, I think it was not, yes, it was like two weeks ago episode. She had done the pedestal and the farm one. I thought, oh, that's really cute. And then she said, oh, yeah, there's the Bunny Bakery, and it's probably going to be a series. Well, I couldn't resist then. So I hopped, hopped onto their Etsy store, and I've got the Bunny Bakery, and I'm going to wait for the little farmhouse one to come out. And I just, I have an idea for finishing. I'm hoping it'll work out. I just need to get do some measuring and find some things. And then, you know, I'd always seen her trucks, and I didn't... It wasn't, I didn't care for doing a monthly series on the trucks, but they were always so cute. But when I was on her Etsy shop, I saw this one, and it was just a 4th of July, Long May She Wave, and I just thought it was really cute, and I thought it would be a nice addition to my patriotic things that I plan on doing. So I picked those two up. And then I couldn't resist the pumpkin patch Carolyn Manning design. Some of her designs are just so intriguing and like a puzzle. And then I was watching Fat Quarter Shop, <laughs> and she sh and Kimberly showed this new. This is going to be a series, seasonal series, Patchwork Seasons, and the first one is Cottontail, and I just thought he was so 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 cute. So I. Uh, went in and it's a download off their website purchasable it's not a free download you have to purchase it and it's in some of the newer dmcs and so i didn't have a lot of those so i have those on order and then just the other day my april woolly candle mat came i thought that was so cute i love the color so i have to say i have and one of the projects was kind of straightening up my uh, craft room and I found some more uh, wool projects that I had purchased and uh, need to get started on those so <laughs> I need to get organized and get started so so those are my purchases for the past two weeks I'm really excited I um, made my first purchase from the attic needlework the other um, a couple weeks ago and then I got notification Friday evening it had shipped so I will have something to share in two weeks with them so I am so very, very excited because I really think it's going to be my Easter start. Um, I even, I don't know if I did myself wrong or did myself right, but I went up to a 45 count linen because they said it was going to be a while for the 40 count. And I'm like, eh, I'll try 45. And I thought if Jen there uh, can do those high counts, I can too. So... So those are my uh, plans and what I've been working on. And I thought I would just um, share something in closing. Um, when I was 10 years old, um, we were going to, we were, we weren't going to, we did uh, move from Northwest Indiana to Florida. Um, my parents had divorced when I was um, about six and my mom had a serious illness, and the doctors had told her, um, you need to get out of the cold, coldness. So my grandparents, his, her parents, she was an only child, had lived in Florida. They had moved back to Indiana to help her after she got sick. And so we all moved to Florida. So you can imagine that being 10 years old was kind of upsetting. You know, I was leaving my friends, the only home I remembered, leaving my dad. And so I was pretty sad about it, but... I had my first slumber party, and um, one of the things I was into, besides Little Miss Holly Hobby back here, <laughs> um, was these sweet little girls from Betsy Clark. I then, after that, I got my mom started me on Precious Moments, but these little things I loved. 
So for my 10th birthday, my mom had purchased this book for me called Hello Sunshine. Just to kind of, and, you know, there's a sweet note in it. So this has traveled with me back and forth, you know, down to Florida. And when I moved back, um, it traveled with me. And um, it was sitting in my room the other day. Or it sits in one of our, our spare bedrooms. And um, I thought I would um, share a little verse from it. Um, because I'm just, most of the quotes in here are about being kind and, um, you know, looking to God for um, guidance. And that's what I, I tried to strive to do each day. And there's just so much going on in our, our country right now. It kind of makes me sad that it's not the same. Not only for my children, but my grandchildren in the world that we live in right now. So... I thought I'd share um, a little clip from here, and the one I'm going to share, because I thought it was fitting today, was this little Betsy Clark. She's sitting there, and she's stitching, and the little verse underneath her says, build a little, build a little fence of trust around today. Fill the space with loving work all there and stay. So we just have to trust every day and to trust um, where God is going to lead us and just hope that we um, heed his calling. You know, my uh, philosophy is that we just need to be kind and be respectful of each other and allow God to work through us and hopefully things I don't know. <laughs> we'll get better and we'll go forward. So I think that's about all today. So until we meet again, my friends, may you be blessed with stitches. Thank you. Bye-bye.